can can we, we talk about the importance of a striker and Erling Haaland. And in this particular play by Rodri, while we can focus on the goals that he scored or the assist, the presence of a threat as a striker that Erling Haaland has for Manchester City pushes Bayern Munich back to the point to where Rodri, when he cuts to the inside, Kimmich is more concerned about the potential pass that is going to go towards Erling Haaland than actually stepping into the path of Rodri. Nobody thinks he's about to hit this. Nobody truly believes, and I don't even think that Rodri truly <laughs> believes that he's about to hit this, but he goes, I think I've run out of options here, so I might as well take it myself, and what a finish it was, and how important it was in the moment. But I just wanted to highlight that the presence of a true threat inside the 18-yard box does more for your team than just the score, scoring of a goal or providing an assist. It really changes the way that you play defensively, and it affects how willing you are to stop or step into the path of a player or drop off because you're concerned about what the big guy is going to do. Mm. It's a hell of a game, Rodri, again, didn't he? Yeah. Taking the goal out of it, it was just his general all-round performance was, was superb. But something we've mentioned, we've talked about in the show before, and I don't make any apologies for repeating myself, it's what we do, uh, is all cities, generally all cities' big players are getting back to their, or, or are yeah. back to their best mm. at the key parts of the season. Now, before and after the World Cup, there was two or three, maybe more of them. Little heavy leg, De Bruyne was out the side. You know, there was a couple of games, Haaland was quiet, not all his own fault, but maybe through the service, the back line had changed a little bit. You know, the full-backs, young Rico Lewis was in, and there was a few changes. And now all these big players, Rodri, Gundogan, De Bruyne, Haaland, Ruben Diaz, Akanji, John Stones, the list goes on. They're all back to top form at the business end of the season. And that's pretty ominous for everybody else if they can mm -hmm. keep that going. But it's a great place for Guardiola to be in because his big runners and riders are all in the traps, ready to go. And it's going to be a slog to the end of the season. Champions League, FA Cup, trying to hunt Arsenal down. But they've got a big squad, and boy, they're playing well. Jan, as far as the second leg is concerned, you're really giving Bayern no shot? What is happening here in Germany, I mean, in Germany at the moment, if they've already started a fight. Who's, who's, who's to blame? <laughs> and it's, and, it's, and it's, gonna, it's, it's gonna be a blame game for the next oh, week. <laughs> I do think that Bayern will, will come back. They will have a much better uh, game in the Allianz. And was Craig saying maybe an early early b b goal could, could help them. But but if you have a look at the team, I mean, wh where yes, there was an offensive team. There was four or five players there. But who, who should they play on? Who should Big decision before the game for Thomas Tuchel was to not to bring Müller. Everybody thought that Müller would be there. He had a fantastic classic, he scored two goals. It's always a contagious way of playing. But I can't see them coming back because, first of all, that can you see what's the chance that Bayern will score three then that Manchester City won't score a goal? I mean, just try to make the, the bet on that one. So there, there is now. I, I, I love both English and German football, but no, Auf Wiedersehen, Bayern Munich, Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.